listening to the really useful podcast. This is the tech podcast for technophobes from makeusoft.com. Uh, my name is Christian Corley and with me this week is Gavin Phillips and we are here to talk about something that uh, has gained in prominence over the past few months. It is the concept and the apparent eventual rolling out of the metaverse or kind of more what you'll have heard of will be Facebook's idea of the metaverse uh, but it is a thing that's existed as a concept uh, for quite some time and you've probably seen the news reports of people donning VR helmets to go to meetings or interact with colleagues and stuff like that I mean I've, I'm going to be honest with you I think it's horrific I, the, the last thing I want to do <laughs> is go and sit in a meeting in real life so I certainly don't want to go and sit in a pretend meeting that's also in real life that's just there's too many layers of meeting for me I don't know about you Gavin yeah it's it's a bit of an odd concept isn't it you know uh, I'm just gonna well not put on my suit and tie to log into the meeting where my avatar is wearing a nice suit and tie so I can look nice and professional in the virtual world whilst I mean presumably sitting in your comfy pajamas still I mean that side of it actually kind of does appeal to me <laughs> Uh, it's a funny old thing though isn't it the word um metaverse and the way it's sort of been thrust upon most people all of a sudden with facebook's pivot to you know we're not a social media company anymore we're we're here to now build the metaverse and the way that uh facebook ceo mark zuckerberg sort of went about it as now we're going to lead you into this you know what's I guess what the third coming of the internet I guess uh, and the internet will no longer be as you know it and you will not view or engage with the internet like you have done before where you sit you know on your chair in front of your computer and you click things but you will be within it in in some way you will have a presence within the metaverse and you will be able to move through it and engage with it in a different way that we engage with the internet now. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I quite like the way I engage with the internet now. Yeah, so do I. I. I'm quite a fan of it, really. And like you were saying, the idea of having to put on a on a headset to get in there and look at a website or access a forum or any of the other myriad things you you do online doesn't appeal to to me and i'm guessing it's not going to appeal to the vast majority of people so in that i think it's important to sort of clear up what the metaverse is going to be and things that the metaverse might actually not be so one of the things is that you probably won't have to actually have a vr headset to access the metaverse as as facebook is going to try and create it or facebook as they're now known as meta to fit with the name Mm -hmm. um so you will actually still be able to access it through a screen and it'll be more like a form of um augmented reality where you see extra things in your screen um probably better access through with a virtual reality headset for more engagement but as you said before like sticking on a headset to complete basic tasks is well it's a bit dull really isn't it (laughs) a bit silly and a bit of waste of time not very efficient no and um and for a lot of people it's probably a waste of money i would think you know vr headsets are still quite expensive especially ones that are of a really really uh high high quality Mm -hmm. and for most people spending an out spending out on a on a laptop or anything like that is is a pretty big outlay anyway isn't it yeah. so and if it works perfectly well uh you know the internet is pretty good as it is i think most people would probably agree there's obviously issues here and there but we won't delve into that that's uh, that's probably a whole other podcast but um what is wrong you know, with the internet? Yes, yeah, we can do that. One. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> but by and large, you know, it works. You go to a website and the website works. 
you go to a forum and the forum works, you can engage with people um, as much as you want or as little as you want, case may be. And um, there's actually not that much wrong with it. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't feel necessarily comfortable having to switch into this thing where you are more of an online presence than you may want to be. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is um, going to be difficult. I mean, it may not even take off in a manner that's anything like what's expected. I mean, if we cast our minds back to Tim Berners-Lee's um, vision for the World Wide Web, uh, it was decentralized and you'd be able to change anything that you needed to change and there would be a high level of trust and the World Wide Web didn't turn out like that. So uh, it's entirely possible that this won't come about the way it does. On the other hand, we might end up with two, if you like, Web 3.0s. We have the Metaverse Web 3.0, and then we have the decentralized web that is also looks like it's going to come along. The two things might operate off each other, and there might be it might the Metaverse might just fulfill a small task. We're using Skype to record this. Some people use Zoom for meetings. It might be that the Metaverse does little more than provide a virtual gateway into a workplace for um, work from home purposes and little more than that because really doing much more than that people aren't really interested in we don't know um someone who has a good idea about this is thomas johan lorenz and he is going to speak to me um shortly about the metaverse and how he believes britons will soon be having christmas dinner with family in the metaverse And we'll take a moment from our usual podcast proceedings to just remind you that the really useful podcast can be found pretty much anywhere you find podcasts. So we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, we're on Google Podcasts. We're hosted at Transistor.fm, so you can find us there as well. We're also on YouTube and, of course, on MakeUseOf.com. Now, however you subscribe to the really useful podcast and listen to us, it would be amazing if you could take a moment to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That will help us to find new listeners and take our podcast to ever greater heights. You'll find the link to our Apple Podcast page in the show notes. Thanks a lot. Uh, now on the really useful podcast, I'm joined by Thomas Lorenz. He's the CEO and founder of Journey. It is a metaverse company. Uh, Thomas, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you, Christian, for having me. Can you tell me a bit about what Journey does and your relationship with metaverse? Yeah, sure. So Journey is the metaverse company. We started it 1.5 years ago, and we are the leading metaverse technology as of today that allows highest quality metaverse experiences accessible on any browser, on your smartphone or your computer. I've had a look at your website and it looks amazing. Thank you. It's, it's a very striking opening image. There's all these wonderful things, the future of digital experiences, those use cases and how we might rethink uh, identity and social interactions now a lot about what we know the public knows about metaverse is being uh, formulated and perhaps um, narrative changed slightly by facebook's renaming themselves with meta then unveiling their metaverse so that's obviously um, a big advantage in this industry to have a name as big as facebook getting involved but how do you expect this to affect the, the metaverse and businesses like journey that were already involved so when we started um, Journey 1.5 years ago, we didn't know where this would be going, as always when you start a company, right? We've seen such big demand of the, over the course of the last year for metaverse-related projects from all industries, ranging from art, music, entertainment, to B2B conferencing, to education, HR, basically 
every industry range from automotive to uh, you, you can mention whatever and we've been speaking to all of them let's say okay. so we already sensed before facebook announced that there is something massive coming up okay also when looking at my entrepreneurial history i've done a couple of things in my life already but i've never experienced a dynamic like this with every, anything i've done before um, just because I've seen so much pressure and demand for the market around something that now is very clearly called metaverse. But before and when we started, it was not called necessarily metaverse solutions. It was just called rethink how people can connect in the internet or rethink 3D in the internet, bring people into the internet instead of on the web. You know, mm -hmm. uh, those were terms we used before Facebook announced um, that metaverse term. We meant we named ourselves the metaverse company already before Mark Zuckerberg announced their renaming. So we already kind of sensed what's coming. Yeah. And we obviously now benefit from this. Why? Because we are a startup. We are global world market leaders with our technology but we're still a startup and startups could never afford that global attention to that topic that the announcement of facebook has brought to us and uh, the thing we've we've done and the, it's definitely a benefit that we are already in the market and have already worked with big global brands like bmw adidas or siemens or many others and have provided stunning metaverse cases already while facebook is right now speaking about a potential future let's say in five years time or apple is looking into new devices that may foster a metaverse future in five years time we are already providing solutions as of today and that is definitely a quite healthy situation to be in Absolutely. global attention on the topic and we are already providing world leading solutions for this topic while others are think speaking about the future and just quickly summarize what the services that you're doing you have um, unique worlds with realistic 3d products you offer live conferencing a spatial web experience with custom avatars set up virtual connections use expressive emojis and have environmental interactions i mean that's all pretty much what we saw from facebook's presentation right there you're already uh, delivering it now this is all kind of grown in the past couple of years hasn't it and yes if we you're in a country with a lockdown is is this an opportunity for this metaverse to be growing and to for as a kind of a, a sideline or an, an addition to home offices and remote work two years ago we entered a remote first era and i don't think it will ever change again it has been remote only for some time when hard lockdowns were in place but we are now in a remote first era and in this remote first era we need to find good ways to connect virtually because that what is remote that what remote is about and i don't believe that the current tools we are using in our everyday life um, be it Zoom or maybe email are the way to go and the most human thing we can imagine because the internet as we know it has so far been about a highly efficient exchange of data and information if you look at Google or Amazon or email you get all the relevant information immediately it's, it's amazing right but human communication is only 20% about the efficient exchange of information. That's why you don't feel fully satisfied at the end of the day in front of the computer. At times you even may feel a bit empty. Why? Because the other 80% that make human communication is about relationships, emotions, and experiences. And this part of human communication has not yet been addressed on the internet. And the metaverse changes that. How? Basically by providing immersive experiences that truly touch humans in, in a way more immersive way than the tools we're normally using can do. 
And that's why the, the pandemic has definitely accelerated the need for virtual tools. We all know that. We all experience this every day. And by doing so, obviously, the need for better virtual solutions has also increased. Better virtual solutions to connect humans, to exchange um, things that are going beyond just data in exchange and creating communities, creating a feeling of belonging, telling stories, creating emotions, whatever you want to do, you can better do it in metaverse virtual experiences than in the standard way. And this is probably why this idea of the metaverse is so powerful and why all those big tech players are currently looking into it and why so many enterprises are trying to enter that space. Okay. Um I've got some stats here. Uh, they're probably the same around the world, although they are UK based. Um, we have um, from Forest Research, 17% of Brits said they would like to spend some time exploring the metaverse. We have research from Smirnoff that a fifth of workers, oh, that's why it's from Smirnoff, uh, more than a fifth of workers <laughs> are in a virtual Christmas party due to COVID. Can those activities, can they really be supplanted in the metaverse? Could we be having kind of Christmas parties, even having the Christmas meal in the metaverse? Well, yes, okay. <laughs> um, we, we can. Um, first of all, I, I would always prefer a real Christmas dinner mm -hmm. than, instead of having a virtual Christmas dinner. That's for sure. And I think everybody around the world will agree to this. However, as I said before, we are now entering a remote first era and there are certain things that potentially have been done in person in the past that will now be done virtually, either because they have to, because of pandemic or they're more efficient to do uh, virtually. So, and if we look at those things that need to be done virtually, like the Christmas dinner this year, <laughs> um, then you better do it the best virtual way it can be done. Is it better than an in-person gathering? No, it would never, I don't think it ever will, or at least not in the next 20 years, it will not be better. But there are definitely better ways to celebrate a virtual Christmas party than doing it in Zoom. You know, yeah. there are, and why? Because in Zoom, you have a flat experience and it's, we, we all know Zoom. I don't have to describe it, but um, in the metaverse-like experience, you can meet as funny avatars in a winter forest, for example, and you can still have voice chat and video chat, uh, but you can walk through that forest and maybe build a snowman jointly <laughs> or throw a snowball at you. <laughs> Maybe even meet at a virtual bar and have a warm red wine, Glühwein, as we say in Germany, uh, together while you listen to music. And you can recreate some of those beautiful social interactions that we only have in the up until now in the physical world in the best way possible in the virtual world. And that's where the beauty lies of metaverse-like social gatherings, like Christmas parties in the metaverse. You know, it's just a more human, a more immersive, a more beautiful and social experience than you can have in Zoom or via Slack. I am a little reluctant about this whole thing. The common kind of... Uh interpretation of metaverse what it means it, it's like the, a vr and an ar uh, virtual reality and augmented reality and the requirement to wear something on your face and i know yes. a lot of people are also reluctant about helmets and even eyewear so wh where does where does this go in terms of headwear is, is there is there an end point of this where actually no no vr helmet is required so i don't believe in a future where we are all be 
where we all are wearing VR headsets. <laughs> I think this is a very dystopian view on humankind. <laughs> and I don't think it will ever happen. It, uh, VR headsets have been on the market for about 10 years now, um, heavily been invested into by big players. There has been a global pandemic for two years where everybody was sitting at home and still the market penetration is very limited. Yeah. And I think it's for a reason because humans just don't want to take them on all the time and it's just not accessible. Okay. So I don't believe in the future where we all are using those gadgets. Uh, what we do with journey is addressing exactly this because what we are using, what billions of people are using as of today are their smartphones and their notebooks. This is what everybody is being used to. And we want to bring the most VR-like experience you can have, the most immersive and beautiful and social experience you can have on your smartphone or your computer. And we are already doing so as of today. And that makes this thing very accessible, very mass accessible, way more than the VR glasses have ever been, way more than Oculus will be in two years time. Now, when we look at the midterm future, I obviously there's a lot of big tech players looking into development of new hardware. That's also hugely what Facebook's vision is about, the development of a bit more accessible hardware. But to be honest, I'm a bit reluctant to believe that this will completely disrupt how humans communicate. Because I don't think in three years' time, billions of people will wear new glasses, even if they're more accessible than the ones we, we see now with VR headsets. Um, I think it will be something like the Apple Watch. You know, it's a, it's a gadget. Millions of people will use it, but it's not the main tool of humankind, like the smartphone is of, as of today. I don't see this happening in the next 10 years. So if you ask about which hardware devices will we be using? Yeah. I say, as of today, we're, let's just use the devices we're using anyway already, our smartphone, our computer. And over the course of the next five years, there will be new hardware types being released to the market. Some of them may be very attractive, designed by Apple. First adopters will start to use them very early on and then it will triple down a bit to the more mass market, just like the Apple Watch has. But I don't think it will replace completely the hardware devices over the next five years um, that, that we have already learned to use over the last 10 years, which is computers, notebooks, tablets, smartphones. What, what do you think that hardware would, would be? What would it look like? What would it do exactly? Well, we are in touch and in a lot of conversations with relevant players that are developing new hardware devices. Um, so I'm, I'm quite confident that it will be about um, more accessible types of VR headsets that you don't have to, that are not as heavy, that are not as, you don't have to really put them on your head. You can just hold them in your hand you know, and then get an immersive feeling, maybe on a stick. Um, that's the first step. Then we will see new actual glasses, sunglass-like style, almost like Google Glasses did before, but more, more beautiful, <laughs> um, more stylish, probably released by one of the big tech players over the next 18 months. And if we look in a, a bit more far off, potentially, also a bit dystopian future. We know that there are a lot of experts currently looking into developing lenses that you can wear in your eye. But as I said, I, I'm, I'm not sure how <laughs> dystopian that view is. I'm not a big fan of that idea. But technically, it will be possible to wear something in your eye somewhere soon over the course of the next couple of years. And 
those are probably the, the types of hardware we will see that are connected to the human body. And then we will also see a couple of hardware devices that allow for augmented reality experiences um, in the Internet of Things, meaning enhancing objects in space with a virtual surrounding, like a hologram on top of your whiskey bottle that tells you the story behind the whiskey, stuff like this. Uh, is also being heavily looked into and we already obviously have seen a couple of first prototypes and even actual products that have been released around this topic so there's also more to come when it comes to the internet of things and the metaverse So that was interesting. I'm not sure my mum will be too pleased about a metaverse Christmas. Um, I don't know about your family situation with regards to metaverse and VR helmets, Gavin, and things like that. Well, you know, I uh, I wouldn't want to say that they wouldn't give it a try, but equally. <laughs> I just can't see it happening. Well, you can't pull a cracker and put your party hat on whilst wearing a VR helmet, I don't think. No, that's true, but you probably still can tell terrible, terrible jokes. So I'm a pro at that. <laughs> um, now, I mean, that's a kind of a very superficial reason to be concerned about the metaverse, but there are three reasons why you may have some worries about it. Um, make yourself Maxwell Timothy took a look at the metaverse and he had some concerns that he's um, researched and uh, brought out into this interesting list. Uh, number one, it could turn out to be a privacy nightmare. Facebook already has poor privacy practices which have been re reported on repeatedly and we've talked about them repeatedly on this very podcast over the years. Um, number two, it's another digital addiction for the Gen Z or the Gen Z depending on where you come from. Uh, Generation Z uh, does slash z does uh seem to uh have a lot of uh, things to get addicted to um back are you um gavin would you be qualified would you qualify as generation z or are you millennial or are they different or are they the same no i'm i'm fairly slap bang millennial as right. a um a, a 30 wait how old am i oh 33 <laughs> <laughs> 33 2021 makes me fairly slap bang millennial i think yeah so um yeah so gen z is the the, the what we have now with the tiktok and instagram and all those guys and yeah i guess that that is a bit of a risk it's um strange because back in uh back in the uh the cool days of gen x hi um the only thing we were worried <laughs> about getting addicted to was um console games oh imagine that um, <laughs> I mean, that never happens. So there's obviously nothing to worry about with uh, the metaverse. Well, there you go. Yeah. And number three, a dangerous monopoly. Meta already enjoys a significant monopoly over our social digital life and Meta being Facebook, of course. Um, it's difficult to have a digital social presence without using any of their social media products. And that includes uh, Instagram and WhatsApp. Uh, so... Yeah, that, that Meta's vision of the metaverse might be a aspect of the actual metaverse. Um, but I mean, whenever I hear metaverse, I just think of kind of Ant-Man, mm. you know? <clears throat> I know um, a, Christian, a colleague of Christian and, and, and mine, James Bruce, who runs the uh, product review section at makeusoft.com, he described what he thought would happen in the metaverse as any other large-scale group interaction scenario that he had encountered in virtual reality which is that inevitably it just boils down to um like 10 year olds screeching at each other <laughs> in funny outfits so <laughs> he uh he's not looking forward to it either shall we say <laughs> That's interesting because he's a kind of a big fan of VR, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. And so for someone like that to say that what's going to come from the metaverse is probably likely to mimic every other uh, bad, bad virtual reality experience that many people have. So there's lots of very, very good virtual reality experiences, but anything that throws a lot of people 
into a group scenario that inevitably goes poorly. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the case. I mean, that's, that's something that just happens virtually, though, isn't it? It doesn't really happen in real life. I remember many, many years ago, it's confession time now, Yahoo Chat was a um, favourite place for me and my friends to um, congregate. But we wouldn't do it from different places. We'd do it in the same room. And, <laughs> and um, dear, 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 um, really useful podcast listener, if you do hail from the United States, I do apologise. We used to take them, Michael, out of Americans, who were the main chatters on uh, Yahoo Chat and on the Yahoo Chat voice chat. And we, we would even get out guitars and sing songs. And it was all very, very <laughs> silly, but it absolutely backs up what Gavin's just related um, from James Bruce, that um, in, the, in, in a virtual scenario, you get a group of people together and it just turns into silliness. Yes, and the, the silliness, of course, can be lighthearted and incredibly good fun. But um, also, as the, the article we were actually just discussing alludes to, it needs a policing sort of structure and it needs policies to keep people out of each other's spaces um, and make sure that you're only interacting with people that you want to interact with and so on. And at that point, it's just mimicking the other forms of the internet that we already know, love and enjoy for the sake of I don't know, some, some form of innovation that I don't think many people actually want. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I remember there was a lot of uh, um, attention for an old game. It was trending Second Life uh, once the metaverse thing had been unveiled by Facebook. Have you ever tried Second Life? I have been into Second Life and signed up for it and, you know, had a little look around, but it was never never really my, my sort of thing. No, I always found it quite bit... dull. Yeah, unless you're engaging with it in the pure sense of like it's more like about role playing and if you're not properly role playing within it then i guess you're not really engaging with it properly but for most people i don't know if the metaverse will reflect that so obviously it was it's been brought up a lot in relation to the metaverse but i think it will have um different areas and perhaps slightly more nuance than that or actually maybe less nuance in that there are some very very specific things about um uh second life world that you know you have to play the specific role you're given or mm. else you're sort of kicked off the server type thing isn't yeah, it yeah yeah it is a it's a sort of um i guess it's a kind of via well not via um it's, it's kind of a v it's kind of Sims-esque, isn't it? But there's a lot more. To it. It's not like The Sims, but that's the closest thing I can think of to it. You have a character that you then guide through in whatever way, and but it's not really like The Sims at all, but only in, in that it's closer to The Sims than it is to Doom, I suppose. Yes, absolutely, yeah. And you're, you're within it, and you are a character, and you're moving around and uh, interacting with other people, and you can take that sort of as far as you want. People have full-time jobs within Second Life that they kind of carry out religiously. And um, that is, you know, I guess, befitting of the name, Second Life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it probably, I mean, we, it's too early to say, obviously, what the metaverse will turn out to be. Um, it's obviously nothing to do with quantum mania. So uh, but I, I just keep thinking of Marvel Comics when I hear metaverse. It just, it just sounds like something that Reed Richards would have uh, investigated at some point as the, in the Fantastic Four. And maybe they'd have got lost there for a, like a, a six-issue run. And then, anyway, I'm digressing. <laughs> yeah, I, um, on one hand, I am, you know, I am interested to see what happens with it because as much as it sounds like a very odd and strange thing um, and something that most people you know, as we've said, we'll probably find completely unnecessary. It is going to be, you know, like a new sort of technology, sort of incorporating a bit of virtual reality and hmm. augmented reality. And, if we take, you know, I was thinking of um, Minority Report and that famous sort of augmented reality um, database linking suspect system thing. 
And I'm wondering whether or not it might actually be something could uh, could the whole metaverse thing maybe maybe it's more geared towards power users than just everyday use, and maybe that's where the actual that's where the the selling point is. Power users who just need everything in front of them at all moments, and they can just bring it in. Yes. Well, I mean, let's hope that it doesn't need to Facebook or Meta doing a, a pre-crime thing <laughs> with <laughs> oh, all the data they collect time. on matter us. of time. <laughs> ah, a somewhat horrifying look into the very near future. Good stuff. <laughs> when, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I'll, I won't say that. Instead, I will <laughs> bade you farewell, dear listeners. And um, Gavin and I will be back for a new, really useful podcast quite soon. Until then, it's goodbye.